Okay, so in today's notes, we're going to write the equation of a perpendicular bisector and also um, look at partitioning a directed line segment. So let's recall the definition as well as the construction. So you just need to watch here of the perpendicular bisector. So the perpendicular bisector construction an arc intersects right on the line if this was drawn to scale. Uh, with the compass at one endpoint and then moving it to the other endpoint of the segment to draw the other arc. So a perpendicular bisector, by definition, divides a segment into two congruent segments. Okay? So the perpendicular piece means that it's going to be drawn so that it intersects the segment at a right angle. And that M is a midpoint of the segment, so that AM, the segment AM, is congruent to the segment NB. So to fill in the blanks at the top of the page, it says recall that perpendicular bisector CD of segment AB is perpendicular to AB at point M, which is the midpoint of AB. So point M is on both segment AB and segment CD. So it's the point of intersection of the perpendicular bisector and the segment. Okay? And also, too, because the lines are perpendicular, the slopes of AB and CD are negative reciprocals. So number one, we have to find the equation of a line that is the perpendicular bisector of segment PQ with coordinates given for both P and Q. So let's draw a picture. So here's segment PQ. So the perpendicular bisector, remember, is not going to be right here. Okay, it may be perpendicular, but it's not a bisector. In order for it to be a bisector, we need to know where that midpoint is. Okay, so I'm going to label this M for the midpoint, and then I'm going to sketch the line perpendicular. So this is what the perpendicular bisector looks like. Okay, and remember to write the equation of a line, right? So standard form or standard uh, equation in point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we need a point on the line. That's our x1, y1, and we also need the slope. Well, a point that's on the line that I can determine, given the coordinates of p and q, is the midpoint of those two points. So the first thing we're going to do is find the midpoint of segment pq. So that's the average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates. So negative 5 plus 3 over 2, and then 3 plus 7 over 2. So our midpoint is the point negative 1, 5. So I'll actually put an m there for my midpoint as I labeled it point M over there. And now we need um, the slope of the perpendicular bisector, the red line. And what I can do is knowing the two endpoints of segment PQ, I can find the slope of PQ and then take its negative reciprocal. So the slope of PQ, remember slope formula is y2 minus y1. So 7 minus 3, I'm going to take the difference of the y values and then subtract in the same order. So if I do 7 minus 3, I need to do 3 minus negative 5. So 7 minus 3 is 4. You end up adding 3 plus 5 to get 8, and we have a slope of 1 half. OK? 
okay? So then slope of the perpendicular bisector is going to be negative 2. It's going to be negative reciprocal of 1 half, which is negative 2. Now over in the equation to the right, to write the equation, I'm going to substitute for x1, y1, my midpoint. So this becomes y minus 5 equals the slope of negative 2 times x minus x1. So it becomes x minus a negative 1, which turns it into x plus 1. So I'm going to distribute the negative on the right side of the equation. We get negative 2x minus 2. And then I need to add the 5 over. So I'm going to put the plus 5 all horizontally. So now for a final answer in y equals mx plus b form is negative 2x plus 3. Below, before we take a look at partitioning, we're going to take a look at uh, finding a missing coordinate of a point given the three points are collinear. And within that box, I want you to recall that three or more points that lie on the same line are collinear. So A, B, and C are collinear if the slope of AB, so this segment here, equals the slope of BC, that other section of the segment. So if you had changed the slope, say instead of going up 1, 2, 3 over 2, you went up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, the three points are not going to be collinear. So in number 2, we have to find the value of x for the three points are collinear. So that means the slope of these two points, or really any two, has to be the same as the slope of any other two points. So the slope formula here, y2 minus y1, 1 minus negative 1, over 2 minus x, that has to equal the slope of these two points. Okay, so 5 minus 1 equal, or over uh, 4 minus 2 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 minus x. Okay, to solve that equation for x, I'm going to cross multiply as I have a proportion. So 2 minus x times 5 minus 1, well this is really 4 times 2 minus x equals 1 plus 1 is um, 2 times 4 minus 2, 2. So we end up with, when we distribute, uh, 8 minus 4x equals 4. Subtract the 8, and we have negative 4x equals negative 4. Divide by negative 4, and we have an x value of 1. Okay, now let's move on to partitioning a directed line segment. So let's take uh, the first part of that I would say, um, description of the la uh, line segment. So honestly, the first term in that statement, partitioning, let's look at the directed part. So we're referring to the line segment itself as a directed line segment. So the first bullet, says a directed line segment AB is a segment that represents from moving from point A to point B. Okay, so there is direction involved. And if you want to go backwards, okay, directed line segment BA is a segment that represents moving from B to point C. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the word partition. So to partition a line segment means to divide the segment into two segments with a given ratio. So if you think of a big conference room or even your gymnasium, we have partition walls that will break up that large room into two or three sections, or maybe more. Okay, so let's focus on this diagram to the right right now. Okay, so here we have point A. Here we have point B. Remember the subscripts, x1, y1, and x2, 
y2 just represent point 0.1 and point 0.2. So to move from point A to point B, you can either go up and then over, so your rise and then run, or you can look at the run to rise. But there's your movement. You're moving left or right and then up or down. Okay? So in the ratio piece, let's focus on that. The ratio is the length of line segment AP to PB. Okay, how long is it? So the length of AP is being represented by A, and the length of BP is represented by B. Okay, so let me make it a little bit easier with these two horizontal segments. So point P, if you look down below, partitions AB in the ratio of 2 to 3. Okay? Or we can say that this part in reference to the whole length, right, is 2 fifths of the way. Now if we reverse that, or switch the length to 3 to 2, so point P partition segment AB in the ratio 3 to 2, now point P, again the total distance is 5, is 3 fifths the distance from A to B. All right, now let's do this, or actually partition a line segment in the coordinate plane. So number three says, what are the coordinates of the point on the directed line segment from K to L that partitions the segment in the ratio of three to two? And the use of the accompanying grid is optional. Absolutely not. Always graph it. Even if it was a multiple choice question, graph it as it makes it so much easier. Okay? So let's take a minute and plot the two points K and L. So K is left five, five down four. And then L is 5, 1, 1. And I'm going to, if you have a ruler, take and draw the segment. Okay. Now, we're going to take the time to calculate the slope. Or if you have a graph, just come over and count it. So we go rise up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the slope is 5 tenths. If you did use the formula, 1 minus 4 is 5, and 5 minus the negative 5 is 10. Okay? So now that we know the slope, we need to go the ratio 3 to 2 we need to go three-fifths of that distance up and three-fifths of that distance over. So the first thing I'm going to do is find three-fifths of the rise. So three-fifths of five. Cancel the fives out is three. And then three-fifths of, or, yeah, of ten. Five is in ten twice is six. So we would go up one, two, three units and over one, two, three, four, five, six. So here would be our directed, um, here would be point P, I'm going to call it point P, that partitions that line segment into the ratio of three to five. Now, I'm going to take, you can actually, you can go on the grid and see what point that is, just count the coordinates. But if we were doing this as a multiple choice or without the grid, you take the starting point, so there's negative 5, and you add the distance that you're going to it. So remember, this was the change of y, and this is the change of x for slope. So we would add the 6 to the x, and then we have negative 4 plus 3, which gives us 1, negative 1. So from the origin, we do go right 1, down 1, and there's point P. Number four. Find the coordinates of the point P that lies along the directed line segment from J to K and partitions the line segment in the ratio of four to one. So let's plot J and K. 
left two up one, two, three, four, five, and right two, one, two, down one. Now I'm going to take the time to count the slope again. So I have the change of y is 8. Okay, we're going down 8. So that would actually be a negative 8 this time. And we put change of y is negative 8. And then we're going over 1, 2, 3, 4. So change of x equals 4. So our slope is negative 8 over 4. So if I take, again, 4 to 1, that breaks it up into, or the ratio would be 4 fifths, or the distance, rather, is 4 fifths. So from J to K, we're going to go 4 fifths of the distance down and over. So we're going to take 4 fifths of negative 8, which is negative 32 fifths. I can't do any reducing. And then 4 fifths of 4, can't reduce again, and that's 16 fifths. So from our starting point, J, which is, um, so if I start J, which is at negative 2, we're going to add that change of x. Remember, this is change of x, change of y, or that distance that we're adding to change of x, change of y. I don't want to get, the, I don't want to make that confusing, so I apologize. So we're going to add that distance that we're moving from the x value. So that is the 16 fifths, and then the 5. We're going to subtract negative 32 fifths. So on your calculator, you can take care of that. And that becomes point P, which is 6 fifths, negative 7 fifths. So the formula, okay, is first, given your ratio, you have to be told how you want to break up the segment. So I'm going to call it ratio A over B. I could use... I don't want to use x over y because we have x and y coordinates. So given the ratio a over b, we take the x1, our starting point, and add a fraction of the change of x, which was x2 minus x1. Remember that was your change of x. Make that look a little bit better. x1. So that's the change of x. And then we take our starting point, our y1, and add a fraction of that distance, which is y2 minus y1, or our change of y. So we're going to finish this before we take a look at the construction with one question that doesn't have a grid. Okay? I still like to sketch a picture on the side. So we have segment A, B, and P is on there such that when you break it up, the ratio of AP to PB is 4 to 5. So the left side is a little bit shorter than the right. Given the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B, um, determine and state the coordinates of point P. So we want to know our rise or change of Y. We want to know that change of X. So let's look at change of y or change of x, which is the slope. So subtracting the y values, we have 21 minus the negative 6. Subtracting the x, we have 10 minus the negative 8. So that's 27 over 18. So if using this formula, this formula above, I can move that down. The formula says we take our starting point Okay, the directed line segment AB starts with point A. So point P, we take our X1, which is a negative 8, and add to it a fraction 
And if it's 4 to 5, that fraction is going to be 4 ninths. So 4 ninths of, okay, x2 minus x1, that was this value right here, or 18. And then our y1 coordinate, the negative 6, plus 4 ninths of 27. Okay, let's move that down and do the math. I'm going to grab a different color. So we have negative 8 plus, well, 9 goes into 18 twice. So 4 times 2, negative 8 plus 8. And then negative 6 plus, 9 goes into 27 three times. So 4 times 3, 12. So our point is 0, 6. And now to finish. We're going to construct the point L on the line segment so that the ratio of AL to LB is the point two or is two to one. So we're going to partition the segment where point L is the point that's going to partition the segment into a ratio that's two to one. I'm going to move it down so I can just see the segment, but I'll read through the steps as we do it. Step one that says draw any ray AX making an acute angle with AB. So ray AX needs to be drawn from point A. So take your ruler. So here's ray, it has to be an acute angle. So here's the ray AX. Okay. Number two. Draw circle A with center A, any radius, and label the intersection of circle A with A axis P. So take out your compass. We're actually not going to draw a circle, but we're going to draw an arc. Okay? Now, if you look at step 3 and 4, we're also going to draw, so step 3 we draw circle P with center P, radius AP, and P was the point from step 2 that we labeled on the ray AX. So from that endpoint, we draw another circle, and that endpoint is going to be Q, and then we draw another circle with the same radius, and we label it R. So more or less, the ratio is 2 to 1, so we need three segments along the ray. So we're going to label it and draw an arc. Here's one. Here's the second one, two. And here's the third. We draw three segments along the, or three arcs, so that we have three segments. So here's from A to that point, and it just wanted us for our notes to label that as a P, and then the second segment, PQ, and then the thir third segment, QR. So we have three segments now, where this point right here splits it into uh, the ratio of 2 to 1. Next, it says to draw in step 5, RB. So we're going to draw a segment, RB. So I'll do that in red. Okay? And remember, point Q is the point that partitions the ray into a ratio of 2 to 1. We now need to bring that down to our segment, AB. So to do that, step number six, we draw a line parallel to RB through point Q. So to draw a parallel line, we do the corresponding angle. So let's take your compass point. I'm going to make my compass a little bit smaller. Put the compass point on your angle you want to copy. And let me grab green so you can see the arc. You're first going to draw an arc with your compass at point R. And we want to draw the parallel line through Q, so from the beginning of the unit. We want to bring our compass point to Q and draw the same, an arc of the same length. Okay? Now we need to go back to the original, or that first arc that I drew, and I'm going to measure the width of that angle. So let's line it up. I want to rotate it. It looks to be about good. And I'm going to show that I measured it by making an arc. 
And I'm going to run to the respective spot down here, which is where that green arc touches the transversal, more or less. And then I'm going to make that same arc. We're done with the compass. And now through this point right here, we can draw a line. Okay, so last part, label the intersection. Uh, once we draw that line of the line parallel to RB through point Q and AB is L. So let's draw our line. You really can, I mean, you can stop here. You can extend, but I would stop because what we're looking for is this point right here. Oops, I don't think I'm on pen. So at this point, this is the L. Okay? So this ratio from here is 2, and then here is 1. And you can double check that you did the construction correctly by taking your compass, let's change it to orange, and then I'm going to rotate it around, swing the arm, and if you measure this distance, so from B to L, okay, so this is like copying a segment, this is one length, this is the second, and here is the third. So there you have it. There's the ratio of two to one.